Hey, what's up guys? This is Justin Johnson. Today I'm going to be talking about this brand new, beautiful Maiden guitar right here in my lap. I've been playing Maiden guitars for a little over a year now, and uh, especially this beauty right here. This is my Blackwood model. And today I'm going to be playing this baby right here. This is the EA-80C, also known as the Australian. Why do they call this the Australian, you ask? Good question. You might be thinking they call it the Australian because Maiden Guitars is Australia's biggest and longest running guitar company. That may be true, but that's not why they call it the Australian. I don't know if that's true, but I think it is. Is it called the Australian because Maiden Guitars has been building guitars out of Australian tone woods for over 50 years? Getting warmer. Is it called the Australian because the EA 80C uses all Australian tone woods and is the showcase piece, a masterclass, as it were, in how to use Australian tone woods on an acoustic guitar? Bingo. Or would that be dingo in Australia? Anyways, so let's dive in a little bit. I'm going to tell you a little bit about the woods this guitar is built from, some of the cool features about it, and then, uh, of course, make some music on it. So normally when I go through the uh, guitar features, I start with the body and the pickups, everything like that. But I just love this headstock. Check this thing out. This is called their keyhole headstock shape. And, you know, it's got this very distinct contour around the top, this ornamentation around the top. And it just looks awesome. Also, uh, you'll notice it's got this high gloss finish here to the top. And below that, uh, really being shown off is that beautiful blackwood veneer up there. It looks killer. And with a veneer like that, you know, you don't need much else. It just, the wood shows off itself. And that's kind of what this guitar is all about. It's got the Maiden logo up there. It's also got these gold Grover tuners. I'm liking the gold hardware on this too. It brings out this really like nice contrast with the tans and the browns and all these wood tones. All right, the top here might look like spruce and it is not spruce. Again, it is all Australian woods. So this is actually a wood that's called bunya. I love the subtle streakiness in this top too. You get these kind of darker, uh, almost like tan streaks that go through it. And the grain looks a little bit different than spruce. Although basically, uh, if you didn't know any better, I think both sound wise and appearance wise, you'd probably swear that this was a spruce top. It's got a beautiful herringbone rosette around the sound hole. Understated, classic, tasteful. The wood on the bridge and on the fretboard is desert acacia wood, which uh, I don't think you would have ever guessed. And there's a detail I love about Maiden guitars that I see on, on every one that I've seen, and I never hear anyone mention it. And that's just how nice the polish job is on the fretboard and the frets. It almost looks like there's some kind of gloss finish, but there isn't. It's just so smooth and it catches the light in such a beautiful way. And on the fretboard, again, very simple but bold is the Australian uh, inlay right there. So let me flip it over and you'll see the back, the sides, and the neck are all solid blackwood, just like that veneer on the headstock. And I love this particular blackwood. It has a nice kind of flame to it, beautiful grain. And you'll notice, too, the top was glossy, but the back, the sides, and the neck all have a satin finish. And there's a really nice contrast uh, when you both feel it and when you see it in person that um, is, is really unique. You know, you get that smooth, reflective surface on the top and on the headstock, but you get this nice, comfortable, and smooth satin finish on the back and sides. I also love it when acoustic guitar companies especially have a satin finish on the back of the neck because, you know, your hand can squeak sometimes if there's a high gloss finish on the back of the neck and it just feels more comfortable and you can feel that wood grain just a little bit. Also, I love this detail right here on the side. All along the edges on the front and the back, it has this pinstripe here where it's a um, basically blackwood and then rock maple, then the blackwood side, and then you have the same kind of pinstripe down here going towards the back. And I guess that's one of the things that as a, you know, huge guitar fan, I love about this kind of guitar and this guitar specifically is that you can tell that this means something to the people making it. You know, it really shows that they have a deep respect and a deep history involved in these woods. They have these beautiful but really subtle details that let the wood kind of show itself off instead of like kind of adding something to it. It's really saying like this is what's unique and beautiful about the wood itself. All of these woods, aside from being beautiful, are excellent tone woods, and 
let me show you what I mean. So I'm gonna play a little something on this guitar and I'm just gonna use this one microphone. This is totally the acoustic sound. I'll get into the pickup and the plugged in sound a little bit later, but I just want you to hear the natural sound of this instrument in the room. Yeah, man, what a what a lively guitar. Super well balanced also. Um, it's got uh, enough foundation in that low frequency range to give you all that body you need without getting in the way. There's a ton of clarity in the lows and in the low mids. Also the highs sparkle and there's a lot of those high mids, but again, nothing, nothing out of balance. Nothing that is either too like clingy or chimey, um, yet it rings out really nicely in the high end. Also, just uh, the guitar feels really lively, and I think some of that, not only does that have to do with the tone woods and that, that bunya top, but it also has to do with the fact that it's got a scalloped X bracing. And with guitars that have scallop bracing, you know, it takes a little extra work and it takes that nice touch by the luthier who builds the guitar, but it always creates a more lively top and a more responsive top. So it sounded killer over that fingerstyle blues playing. Uh, let me see what it sounds like uh, more in like a strumming context. Again, so articulate, so balanced, I love it. All right, so it sounds killer acoustically, unplugged, but it has this pickup right here, and this is a Maton AP5 Pro pickup. One of the things I love about Maton is that they make their own pickups for acoustic guitars. So few companies do that, and um, they've been working on this system for years and years and continually improving it, and uh, it sounds so amazing, it sounds so natural. It's also designed not just to sound great, but it is so rugged. I mean, this whole enclosure is, it feels like a tank. There's an internal microphone that's actually on this kind of like gooseneck um, pole and it rotates around. And, and so you can change the position of the microphone inside to really find that sweet spot, both for your guitar and for your playing style. But they also do that at the factory and they do a great job. So, you know, I haven't even messed with this one. This is just how it came. I love that they give you this control panel right here because this is just the perfect amount of controls you need, I think, in a live situation to really give you exactly the tone that you're looking for on stage. First of all, you have these two knobs right up here. One controls the volume of the internal microphone and one controls the volume of the piezo system that's under the bridge. You also have a bass and treble EQ. And the EQ actually uh, only controls the EQ for the piezo. So the microphone is specifically voiced basically to work in conjunction with the piezo to where it gives you just enough of that air, enough of that articulation from like the natural sound of the guitar body and the air inside to really bring the tone to life and make it sound like you're right there in person in front of it. So when you work those EQs to control the piezo, you're basically adding a body like low end to the bass or maybe cutting back on some of that treble you get from the piezo. So this third slider right here is the volume, and that's the overall volume. So again, 
you've got the volume for the piezo, the volume for the internal microphone, and then this slider, once you have the balance right for the tone you want, this is the overall volume slider right here. So the combination of those three knobs really works well and it's really intuitive as far as giving you the total control you need and to give you the tone that you want um, on stage. These two knobs down here at the bottom um, work together basically to give you a sweepable mid control. So you can either uh, cut or boost the mids and then the other knob is basically what frequency um, you want to cut or boost. You can sweep that to the high mids boost it a little bit, and you can maybe hear some more of that finger articulation or bring out your strumming if you're wanting to cut through the mix in a full band. Let's say you're getting a little hot in one signal and you need a, li a little bit of a cut so that you don't feed back on stage. That can also help if you cut the frequency that's catching that feedback. You can start dialing that out, keep your natural tone, but then avoid a lot of those feedback issues on stage too. Another thing that uh, sounds simple but really smart is the fact that it uses AA batteries instead of 9 volt batteries. Why is that ingenious? Uh, basically because two AA batteries lasts way longer than one 9 volt battery and it takes up the same amount of space. So, pretty good idea. Alright, so I'm going to plug in now, give you an idea of how this pickup system sounds. So with this next playing example, you're only going to hear the pickup system. I'm running through my Fishman Loudbox acoustic amp, and you will not hear any microphone at all. So this is all just the pickup system by itself. One more note as I'm plugging in though, and I love this, is that the quarter inch jack is separate from the strap button. So you don't have to stretch your strap button around your quarter inch output jack like you do on a lot of acoustics. I love when the acoustic guitar has a separate position for, the, uh, for that quarter inch jack. All right, so I'm gonna play this, and this is, again, just the guitar pickup tone, no acoustic uh, microphone whatsoever. <laughs> Man, that pickup system blows my mind. Like, I really had to do a double take when I started playing to make sure that the microphone was not in front of me anymore. I mean, like, it was, it was really, really convincing. Generally, with any piezo system, you really get that strong sense that you're listening to an acoustic guitar that is through a piezo pickup. And with this, the combination of, you know, the type of piezo they use, the fact that they have been really developing this specifically for their guitars in-house and then combining that with the internal microphone system that again is very unusual and very specific to Maiden guitars. They really nailed the ability to capture the tone of this instrument and just basically pipe it through this quarter inch cable. Very impressed with the pickup system. And I think it's that philosophy of quality and the philosophy of making sure every component is done right that really sets Maiton apart from a lot of other companies. I think a big part of the reason why that is is because maiton has been family owned for 75 years. It's 100% family owned. And so you have people that aren't just making business decisions about where their company is going. They're really making decisions about where the legacy of what their family's been doing is going and the artwork that goes into it and the history behind it. And I think that's really what, you know, you feel when you, when you hear it, when you play it. I mean, it feels like there were hands on it, there were eyes on it, and a, and a lot of attention through the years going into how they can really make these guitars sing. This is honestly one of the best, like, especially fingerstyle guitars I've ever played. And, um... 
I just can't put it down. I'm, re I'm really impressed by this guitar. And also the fact too, like I said, I've always been really fascinated with, with woods from other areas and the fact that this guitar showcases those Australian regional woods and does such a killer job doing that. It's pretty amazing. It's, it's really awesome in a lot of different levels. Well, I wanna thank Mayton and Guitar World for putting this guitar in my hands so that I can play it, fall in love with it, and uh, share it with you guys. If you haven't done it already, make sure you hit that subscribe button here on my channel and hit that bell notification so you get notified when I put up more videos. Thanks for watching. You guys rock. See you next time.